the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Give him all the praise and all the glory. Bless his name. Well, the cross will always represent the love God had for me. When the Lord of glory heaven sent, gave all on Calvary just for me. Just for me, Jesus came and did it just for me. Well, the cross will always represent the love God had for me. When the Lord of glory heaven sent. Gave all on Calvary just for me, just for me. Jesus came. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb that was slain. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb that was slain. Praise Him, hallelujah. Praise Him, hallelujah. Praise Him, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you for the cross. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you for the power that was exerted when you raised Jesus from the dead. Today we stand victorious and we give you all the praise. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. Be seated. Happy Easter to everyone. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I'll be teaching tonight um, on a subject that relates to the season. We'll finish up our series um, at the nearest opportunity we have, but for now, we'll be looking at the doctrine of resurrection. The doctrine of resurrection. It's important for us to not only celebrate Easter, but understand the implication every time believers are bankrupt of understanding our activities become a mere ritual that sustains no spiritual value nor power to transform us all over the world at this time believers are celebrating what they know to be easter and when you probe into the understanding of the average believer as to what they understand by this concept you will find out that most believers have no idea 
at best they will tell you jesus died jesus rose again i am free free from what they do not know why did he die they do not know and so we'll be looking very briefly and then we'll pray and we trust that god will grant us grace in jesus name hebrews chapter 6 we thank god for the showers of blessings may it rain blessings on your life in the name of jesus hebrews chapter 6 we we'll begin our reading from verse 1 therefore leaving the principles of the doctrine of christ let us go on into perfection not laying again the foundation of number one repentance from dead works number two faith towards god number three verse two of the doctrine of baptisms number four of laying on of hands and number five of the resurrection of the dead and then number six of eternal judgment so paul is teaching us here that there is such a thing as the doctrine of resurrection in fact theologically speaking the major difference between the pharisees and the sadducees was their understanding as to the concept of the resurrection one party believed that there's no such thing as the resurrection of the dead hallelujah there is the doctrine of resurrection philippians chapter 3 and verse 10 apostle paul was crying a prayer unto god and he said that i may know him and among the many things he desired to know even though he wrote two-thirds of the new testament he was attempting to describe the vastness and the depth that was contained in this revelation he calls it the power of his resurrection the power of his resurrection that i may know him and that i may also know the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being made conformable unto his death are we together write this down let me start with easter what is easter easter is the commemoration of the resurrection of jesus christ from the dead in simple terms whenever we talk about and celebrate easter all across the christian faith we celebrate Christ, um, easter now as the commemoration of the resurrection of jesus christ from the dead what does it mean to commemorate to commemorate means to observe it means to mark it means to show respect for so when we commemorate easter we observe the mystery contained in that season we mark it with understanding and then we show respect for the sacrifice of jesus christ let me define resurrection before i begin to teach what does it mean to resurrect what is resurrection resurrection comes from a greek word called anastasis anastasis let me spell it for you a n a s t a s i s one more time a n a s t a s i s anastasis and it means raising up or standing up again so from the root word when we talk of resurrection we mean a raising up or a standing up again something that was once standing and then it fell became lifeless or lost its potency now when you engage it to a process that brings it up again it's called resurrection anastasis let me define it for you resurrection is an act or instance of a man's immortal spirit resurrection is an act or instance of a man's immortal spirit reuniting with the body resurrection is an act or instance of a man's immortal spirit reuniting with the body 
either the same body or a glorified body resurrection is an act or instance of a man's immortal spirit reuniting with the body it can be either the same body that he lost at the point of death or another kind of body higher in quality the bible calls it a glorified body are we following tonight that resurrection is an act or instance of a man's immortal spirit reuniting with the body either the same body or a different kind a glorified body now write this down please resurrection is a central doctrine of the christian faith resurrection is a central doctrine of the christian faith we may differ now just write and look up please all across the christian circle as we call it we have the concept of denominationalism where people seem to emphasize certain aspects of the christian faith we have what we call the pentecostal the charismatic movement we have the evangelicals we have you know different sects here and there but for as long as you call yourself a christian you may differ in other things like the ministry of the holy spirit and so on and so forth but resurrection the doctrine of resurrection makes up a central part of the christian faith and the christian experience it is important for us to understand this that resurrection is a central doctrine of the christian faith like we read in hebrews chapter 6 and now let's look at first corinthians chapter 15 paul himself gives us the doctrine of the resurrection from verse 11 this is the most concise exegesis of the doctrine of the revelation of the resurrection as revealed by apostle paul himself first corinthians 15 and verse 11 therefore whether it be i or they so we preached and so ye believe next verse it says now if christ be preached that he rose from the dead how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead he's dealing with an issue right now but if there be no resurrection of the dead remember i taught you that the pharisees and the sadducees were two major sects the sadducees did not believe in the resurrection of the dead are we together it was the major point of difference between the pharisees and the sadducees but if there be no resurrection of the dead he said then christ is not risen next verse we're reading to 22 and if christ be not risen then our preaching then is our preaching vain and your faith is also vain yeah and we are found false witnesses and we are found false witnesses of god because we have testified of god that he raised up christ whom he raised not up now he's speaking with respect to the thoughts of those who are fighting the idea of the resurrection whom he raised not up if so be that the dead rise not 16 for if the dead rise not then is not christ raised and if christ be not raised your faith is vain and ye have yet in your sins 18 it says then they also which are fallen asleep we're coming there now because you see the bible has an idea of what we have come to know and call death the bible in the pauline epistle calls dying in christ sleeping they also which are falling asleep in christ are perished that means there's no hope of seeing them again then he says if in this life only we have hope in christ we are of all men most miserable verse 20 but now is christ risen from the dead hallelujah and become the first fruit of them that slept 21 for since by man came death 
take note take note we're going to deal with some issues here since by man came death the bible says by man came also the same resurrection of the dead 22 the last verse for as in adam all die even so in christ shall all be made alive in the seminary we will say may the lord bless the reading of his word facts about resurrection right please there are two or three major facts that i would want to spell out immediately about the resurrection number one the bible teaches please write the bible teaches that all men will experience resurrection the bible teaches that all men will experience resurrection two scriptures for that first point the first fact about resurrection that we must understand is that the bible teaches number one that all men will experience resur resurrection acts chapter 24 please give us verse 14 and 15 but i confess unto thee that after the way which they call heresy so worship i the god of my fathers making defense of the gospel now believing all things that were written in the law and the prophets please let's read verse 15 together ready one to read and having hope towards god which they themselves also allow that there shall be a resurrection of the dead uh-huh both of the just and the unjust the bible clearly shows us that both the just and the unjust will experience resurrection others to be with god others to eternal damnation but the bible teaches clearly that all men will experience resurrection revelation chapter 20 we'll read from verse 11 is god giving someone understanding already 20 and verse 11 and i saw a great white throne and him that sat on it from whose face the earth and the heavens fled away and there was found no place for them next verse and i saw the dead is that in your bible small and great stand before god they were once dead but all of them are now alive standing before god and the books were open and another book was open which was the book of life and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works next verse and the sea gave up the dead which were in it is that in your bible and death and hell delivered up the dead that were in them hmm. and they were judged every man according to their works 14 and death and hell themselves were now cast into the lake of fire and the bible says this is the second death if we have the time we'll have to look at the mere fact that the bible acknowledges that there is a second death it means there is a first one this is the second death next verse the last verse now 15 and whosoever was not found in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire so point one facts about resurrection the bible teaches that all men will experience resurrection fact number two resurrection will always reunite the human spirit and his body resurrection will always reunite man's spirit and his body either the same body like i said or a new glorified body resurrection will always reunite that means it will always involve a reunion of man's spirit and his body the bible teaches us that there are two dimensions as far as the bodies for resurrection is concerned that it is possible for a spirit to return back to the same body it left and then the spirit can also enter into another body two scriptures one to establish the fact that a spirit can return back 
to the same body it left in john 11 from verse 43 to 44 this was the story of lazarus and he said john 11 43 and 44 and when he had thus spoken he cried with a loud voice lazarus come forth please read verse 44 if you can see it ready one to read and he that was dead came forth bound hand and foot with grave clothes and his face was bound about with a napkin and jesus said unto them lose him and let him go so it is possible for the spirit to return back to the same body it left second example stressing that point of same body luke 7 from verse 11 to 17 this was the story of a dear widow the bible calls her a widow who was in a city called Nain and it came to pass the day after that when that he went into a city called Nain and many of his disciples went with him and much people next verse now when he came nigh to the gate of the city behold there was a dead man carried out the only son of his mother and she was a widow and much people in that city with her next verse and when the lord saw her he had compassion on her and said unto her weep not 14 and he came and touched the bear and they that bear him stood still and he said young man i say unto you arise next verse the bible says and he that was dead sat up and began to speak and he delivered him to his mother next verse we're reading to 17 and there came a fear upon all and they glorified god saying that's a that a great prophet is risen among us and that god had visited his people 17 now and this rumor of him went throughout all judea and throughout all the region round about so we see that in both instances the dead returned back to the bodies they had the, the bodies were quickened quickened means it was now made conducive for the spirit to now be able to inhabit it because you see medical science will tell you that when the spirit is detached from a body beyond a certain time that body begins to decay is that true and so both for lazarus and the widow's son even if the spirit wanted to come back the condition of the body because most likely the body left because something i mean the spirit left because something was wrong with the body so there had to be two miracles one the return of the spirit and the other the quickening of that body to now make it conducive for the spirit to return how about another body the bible teaches in first corinthians where we read let's start from verse 35 a continuation of our reading now first corinthians 15 from verse 35 media help us let's work together first corinthians 15 from verse 35 but some man will say how are the dead raised up and with what body do they come so this answers the question directly you are not a fool in jesus name he says now fool he was talking to them now not you you have understanding that which thou sowest is it not quickened except it dies he's borrowing a phenomenon from agriculture now to teach them and that which thou sowest thou sowest not that body that shall be in other words when you throw your corn it is not the body that fell that will come out another body will come with it is that true it's amazing that the first of god's creation to witness resurrection was not even man it was plants that when you sow it will actually reap it goes through that process of resurrection remember that except a corn of wheat falls to the ground and dies jesus was teaching so back to our example it says that which thou sowest thou sowest not that body that shall be but bear grain it may chance um it may chance of wheat or some other grain my apologies for all this king james english but god giveth it a body as it had pleased him 
so god can give it another body and to every seed his own body 39 all flesh is not the same flesh are you see it now he's saying even among flesh bodies there are different kinds but there is one kind of flesh of men another flesh of beasts another of fishes another of birds do you know what this means a human spirit cannot enter into the body of a fish it is not the normal way things should work that was why we need to pray and really examine what happened to nebuchadnezzar how he became an animal the force the spirit of a human being you see that it was a punishment it was not a miracle that god wanted to teach a man a lesson and he took a human spirit and put it in the body of a beast you know what that means many 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 parts components connected to his spirit will not function because the beast will not have the faculties to interact with some of those provisions that the spirit has so it's going to be a perpetual level of torture Forty. We're reading to 44. There are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial. But the glory of the celestial is one and the glory of the terrestrial is another. 42, 41 now. There is the glory of the sun, the glory of the moon, the glory of the stars. And it says one star different from another in glory. 42 now. So also is the resurrection of the dead it is sown in corruption corruption means death doomed it is raised in incorruption it is sown in dishonor it is raised in glory it is sown in weakness for some but it will be raised in power 44 it is sown a natural body it is raised a spiritual body and then he gives us an information that there is a natural body and there is a spiritual body for instance the body you wear when you are in your dreams it is a body but it is not a natural body because your natural body is asleep in the room yet in the dream and the vision you have you are not just a spirit floating you are in another body it says there is a natural body and there is a spiritual body so by these scriptures we establish the fact that resurrection in its character will always bring a reunion between a spirit and a body that immediately gives us a definition of death or a dimension of death separation separation not just cessation of living but separation between the spirit and the body fact number three I'm giving us three facts number one I said that the Bible teaches that all men will experience resurrection number two resurrection will always unite man's spirit with his body either the same body or another kind number three it is impossible to fully understand resurrection and its significance to the believer until you understand four important concepts you cannot fully or it is impossible to fully understand resurrection and its significance it is impossible to fully understand resurrection and its significance to the believer until you understand four important concepts that means there are four important concepts that give us clarity and help us to really understand resurrection are you ready number one sin you cannot understand resurrection until you understand sin number two you cannot understand resurrection until you understand death number three let me slow down a bit it is impossible to fully understand resurrection and its significance to the believer until you understand four important concepts let's take it again number one sin number two death number three the grave number four hell these are the four concepts 
that necessitates the idea of resurrection that means you can it is impossible to claim you understand resurrection as a mystery as a doctrine and its significance to the believer if you do not understand these four biblical concepts the entire journey of redemption and that includes resurrection especially are hinged on victory over these four factors number one sin number two death number three the grave number four hell unfortunately i can't promise you that i will do justice to all tonight because of our time this will require a series to pick one by one by one we can spend a whole day talking on sin another day talking on death another day talking on the grave because this grave you see is not just a hole that you enter are we together for apostle paul to say oh grave where is your victory means it's not just talking of that pit that is dog there is more to it let's see how far god will help us tonight lord open my eyes grant me revelation please pray open my eyes in the name of jesus christ grant me revelation grant me revelation the bible says when the mountain of the lord's house is exalted all people will flow to it and they will say come let us go to the house of god to the mountain of the god of jacob he said and he will teach us his ways in jesus name hallelujah you truly cannot comprehend resurrection and its significance to the believer until you know what sin is until you know what death is until you understand what the grave is and you understand hell because jesus passed through all four for resurrection to happen he became seen he died he was buried in the tomb he experienced the grave and he went to hell what is sin let's see how far we can go let's try to understand the four concepts what is sin first john chapter 3 and verse 4 let's try to touch a bit at least on the biblical concept of sin the bible says whosoever committed sin transgressed against the law for sin is the transgression of the law so according to this scripture the bible identifies sin as two principal things number one transgression number two rebellion please write for sake of time i'm summarizing my apologies sin is transgression of a command not just the old testament law that means for sin to happen there must be an instruction or a command it is not possible for sin to happen until there is something to violate are we together now the character the very nature of sin it must have an instruction or an order given to provide a basis for violating it sin is transgression sin is rebellion what does it mean to transgress to transgress means to violate to transgress means to go against when we talk of transgression we mean to violate and we mean to go against what then is rebellion i'm defining these terms because i do not want us to be in confusion in dealing with this i told you that sin is transgression sin is rebellion what is rebellion i wrote here the willful and continual resistance to constituted authority the willful and continual resistance to constituted authority now you understand what we call the original sin satan's sin his original sin was not just pride his original sin was rebellion willful and continual resistance to constituted authority now in theology there's what we call the original sin the original sin based on the law of first mention 
is in twofold there is the original sin as committed by lucifer and then as committed by man adam what is the original sin as committed by lucifer rebellion revelations 12 7 and 8 very simple lucifer's sin was rebellion that rebellion was sponsored by pride but what he acted out that we know to be seen was rebellion revelations 12 7 and 8 revelations 12 7 and 8 media please help us 12 7 and 8 let me turn it here very quickly for sake of time revelations chapter 12 from verse 7 and 8 it says and there was war in heaven michael and his angels fought against the dragon there was war where for someone to dare to create war that is the height of rebellion there was war in heaven michael and his angels fought against the dragon and the dragon fought against his angels and prevailed not neither neither was their place found anymore in heaven lucifer's sin was the sin of rebellion what what, what about man what was man's sin disobedience simple the sin of adam and eve was disobedience genesis chapter 2 from verse 17 that was where the instruction came that became the basis for obedience or sin are we together now it's impossible to be obedient or to be sinful until there is a set order then you can now violate it until god spoke it was impossible to obey or to sin you have to understand both sin and obedience is with respect to the word of god let me repeat myself again both sin and obedience is with respect to the word of god god's word is the standard for measuring obedience and the standard for measuring sin a violation to the word of god is called sin compliance and obedience to the word of god now is called faith or obedience as you call it is someone learning genesis 2 17 here was the instruction from the lips of god himself but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil it says thou shalt not eat it for in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die take note of that statement do you know what surely means surely die means it's an ordinance it will not change hmm. you need to understand how powerful please let me have your attention you need to understand how powerful the word of god is this is god speaking to man and giving him the first warning we see in scripture he's saying do not eat of this tree for in the day you eat of it something will happen to you thou shalt surely die now let me surprise you do you know that it was god that introduced man to the concept of death satan was not here the first mention of death and the first interaction of the concept of death was not given by satan it was god himself that said listen there is such a possibility called death and that the condition for that death there is something you are going to activate if you transgress are we learning we'll come to death shortly it's just an information i wanted you to know so we see that for lucifer his sin was rebellion for man adam his sin was disobedience disobedience against the law of god genesis chapter 3 from verse 4 and 6 we see the outworking of that disobedience genesis 3 4 and 6 genesis chapter 3 from verse 4 and 6 let me read it and the serpent said unto the woman 
apologies for the projection and the serpent said unto the woman ye shall not surely die you see how satan we've we've dealt with how satan works deception he's telling the woman don't mind god his word is not that powerful ye shall not surely die for god doth know that in the day ye eat thereof he says then shall your eyes be opened and you shall be as the gods knowing good and evil now verse 6 it says when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired and to make man wise one wise what did she do she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and the bible says also gave it to her husband with her and he did eat and something happened immediately now God also helps us to understand his idea about death that when God talks of death primarily he's talking about the spiritual state of the man because he said in the day you eat you will die biologically speaking and physically speaking Adam lived hundreds of years afterwards before he now died physically so he was not just talking of physical death are we together praise the name of the lord theologically paul also helped us understand in his appalling exegesis about the idea of death paul told us that sin sorry that there is the nature of sin and there is the outworking of that nature what we call the acts of sin you may want to write that down that there is the nature of sin and there is the outworking of sin there is the nature of sin and there is the outworking of sin hallelujah in second corinthians chapter 5 and verse 21 apologies again i'm sure they are working on it first corinthians chapter 5 and verse 21 please write it down i'll quote it for sake of time the bible says he who knew no sin became sin he never said he became a sinner a sinner is one who gives room for the nature to find expression but it says he who knew no sin became sin that we might be the righteousness of god in christ ephesians 2 and verse 2 ephesians 2 and verse 2 the bible speaks about the spirit the prince of the power of the air he calls it the spirit that works in the children of disobedience so those who disobey remember that another definition for sin is disobedience that those who disobey there is a spirit at work in them the spirit that works in the sons or the children of disobedience for the sake of our discussion there are three very vital information about sin that i want us to get that connects to our teaching tonight please write it down three very important information about sin that we must get number one is found in romans chapter 3 and verse 23 it says for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory or the standard of god that is the first information about sin that connects to resurrection all with no exception in fact the psalmist said in iniquity did my mother conceive me all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of god second information romans 6 23 are you writing romans 6 23 the first one again it says all have seen 323 and the second information is that the wages of sin is death that means this sin has there is something that comes with it the wages the salary the payment of sin is death but the gift of god is eternal life through jesus our lord the third information now this is very vital first corinthians 15 and verse 56 first corinthians 15 and verse 56 ready let's read it together 
one to read the sting of death is sin and the strength of sin is the law i'm interested in the first part the sting of death is sin this is very powerful now so there is a relationship between sin and death he says the sting that means when sin strikes at you what happens as a result is death wow three most important information all have sinned the wages of sin is death and the sting of death is sin let's talk about death i'm just helping to open us up to these concepts before i now begin to tie the idea of the resurrection and then we'll pray is god helping us the first mention of the word die or anything that relates to death it came from the lips of god himself genesis 2 17 like we read earlier genesis 2 17 he said in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die i told you earlier that the person who introduced the idea and the concept of death was god himself i'm going to be saying a few things that would disturb you but just pay attention and let's learn as we receive wisdom are you ready number one death was not satan's concept hmm. death was not satan's concept satan was not the one who brought the idea of death no dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny the phase of development lord grant me the discipline